we use a paste rather than a filament. So it's, a, it's metal powder with a bit of water, a tiny bit of binder, so that we can flow the paste and deposit layer by layer. All right, guys, we're here at Rapidia, where they 3D print metal and scooters and all kinds of stuff, but it's a really cool technology. It's a little bit different from other technologies, and I'm here with Skyler today to tell me all about it. How you doing? Good. So, what are we looking at here? We've got a machine, we've got a furnace. It's a two-step process. We print kind of like FDM. We use a paste rather than a filament. So, it's, a, it's metal powder with a bit of water, a tiny bit of binder, and so that we can flow the paste and deposit layer by layer. Then, once it puts a layer down, a lamp passes and it dries that layer so that we build a green part by drying paste rather than, you know, melting and then cooling filling. Yeah. That allows us to use a, a really surprisingly tiny amount of binder in the part, so right. we, we kind of skip directly to a brown part, like a part you would normally see out of the debinding step of a metal injection molding Got sort it. of process or metal uh, loaded filaments, things like that. So, th so then you can take your part, go straight into sintering it. Right into this sintering bay. Can we open this up? So yeah, it's a small partial pressure vacuum sintering furnace. Using this paste has allowed us to sort of shorten the end-to-end -end time by a lot, like yeah. maybe more than half. By getting rid of the debinding, we can print a bit faster and we can sinter faster. Right, now one of the things I remember about the material is that unlike a lot of others you were mentioning, very little bit of water, a little bit of binder, it's nearly pure metal, right? In the paste form, it's yeah. about 90% metal by weight. Right. And then like the rest, the 10% liquid is is mostly water. Yeah. And then once you dry it, you have like 99% metal by weight right. and less than 1% binder. Got it. And then your shrinkage factors are way different from anything else in the market, right? It's definitely less than other material extrusion metals. So our scale factor is 1.16. So our shrinkage is, is like 14%. This is one of my favorites here. So here you've got the green part. Well, it's essentially a green part. Yeah, we call it a green part. Right. Yep. So this is before sintering, and you, see, you can see they've got the uh, ceramic layer there so that you can break away from the essentially a raft. And here you have the final sintered part. And this, oh, this feels incredible. I mean, it's that kind of detail and that kind of uh, design that you know a lot of the times you just couldn't really get otherwise through traditional machining. It's only possible through additive. Yeah, so like the walls on this part are as printed and straight out of the furnace. Yeah. And then so the bottom is ground a bit just to give a ceiling surface, but otherwise that's kind of a, a good example of what walls look like in terms of resolution. Very nice. So this part right here is a fascinating example of how you can print multiple parts and then add them together before you sinter. So as you can see, this whole body was printed but these parts were printed separately. And then what's the process? We extruded a bit of paste just into a syringe, squeeze it out like a bead of caulking, squish them together. Squish them together. And in the green state, it's like a little bit of arts and crafts. The result is you have a seamless metal part, so it's like really welded together. It's better right. than a weld, it's closer to a braze. And that like the whole overlap is full of material and then you right. know, fused seamlessly together. Fused seamlessly. And so the reason to do that like on a on a part like this is the print orientation for different features you can like right. you can kind of benefit from like FDM there's a better orientation for most parts right so you can print those features in the orientation you want and then merge them together end up with the part you want you know a part like this showing off some of the finishing capabilities these flanges are just turned on a lathe printing the body of this it saved a lot of fabrication whereas if these had all been pipes then you would have been you know doing coping to get them, and then a bunch of welding. So we printed the body. Uh, there's some machining inside and outside because it, it's a ceiling surface on the board. This is like a valve, that, like a pneumatic valve opens with a piston that goes in there. So this part shows the different types of finishes. We've got the as-printed part, so it's sintered and that's it. Right next to it, you've got what's machined. We printed like that size cube solid and sintered it in 12 hours even. Right. Right, and that's a big difference because what be a lot of the other technologies you can't necessarily do that. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Um, if you had more binder and you were doing like a thermal debinding on a part that thick, you would probably never be able to get it, or yeah. it would take like a week in the furnace. Yeah. Um, to get that debound on such a thick section. So that lack of binders in the material to start with is a huge advantage. 
the lack of binder is kind of the secret sauce behind secret. our process. So we've got the top as printed, machined, but then you've got the wall, that's what it comes out as. You do a little bit of sanding, even a little bit of scotch brake on the, uh, the green part before it's sintered. You get a nice and smooth surface. You can also water smooth it, and that's it again in the green part of the process, having the metals that are you know water-based, etc. And then of course you can come all the way out and polish it. Well, let me not rip my pants on this thing, it's sharp. <laughs> but you can get it down to a super nice polished finish. And of course the base is as printed just like the first layer on an FDM machine. Some other cool little parts I got laying around here I'll just show you real quick is something, this is a burner. This is a 316L stainless prototype burner head. And so we just use the infill dry work pattern to make the diffuser. I've seen a lot of stuff here at AMUG where it's just infill. You didn't have to design it in CAD. You didn't have to do any of that. You just make it like that and it filters or it creates you know, whatever pattern you need to get the flow rates you want. Of course, I've got to show off the obligatory Benchy in 316L stainless steel. I think so. That is very awesome. Then of course, we got the green part down here. So that's what the Benchy looked like before it was centered with that 1.16 ratio. You can see some of the supports were used in there and everything, the ceramic supports. And another cool part like that, where it's, you know, you get this crazy pipe feature that would be just a, a bare machine or manufacture any other way, you can do it additively. Yeah, so on that cube, you saw the green sanded part. Right. So here's an example of where we printed the raft that it's centered on separately from the parts so that we could sand in the green state all surfaces and you end up with kind of like a die cast equivalent. Yeah, thing. it's a really nice smooth surface. So this is a large manifold. So when you scale this up by 1.16, as you can imagine, it's like getting pretty big, kind of close yeah. to the full build volume of our printer. Ah. So that is probably the biggest print we've done, or the biggest yeah. one we have here. We've done a lot of fluidic studies and things like that, where we print in peak for chemical reactors and things like that. And it just shows how additively you can create all these different channels and different, you know, areas going into each other in a very complex device like this, but you print it in one part. You don't have to machine it, you don't have to assemble 17 different parts, you don't have to get it from seven different suppliers because they make the different areas. You can just literally do it in one shot. So let's take another quick look at the machine. Let's go over some basic specs. Obviously it's a paste thing, so you're not doing, you know, all sorts of temperatures and hot ends and nozzles and stuff like that, but you do have nozzles, you've got a build volume. How big is the build volume? The build volume is 200 millimeters by 240, and the the Z height is 150 millimeters. The, the material pace over here, is is the driver going on inside of here? Is this pushing up, or is it being pulled from the hot end? So we, under here, we, we're pr like hydraulically pressurizing these to feed into the extruder head, but the extruder head is actually what does the accurate metering out of the paste to you know, give the precision to build a, a final part. Got it. <laughs> Skyler, thank you so much here at AMUG. I appreciate it. Great information. Thanks and, for stopping uh, by. Love it. If you guys want to learn more, check out visionminer.com and Rapidia, of course. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more like it. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.